miracles? What is this, the stupid convention? Is this a handbook for people being stupid? Are all these pages about somebody believing that stupid things actually happen? What are you kidding? I'm not stupid, I don't need this book. Miracles, Jared's gonna tell me that miracles exist. Yep, gonna tell you guys my testimony. Smells good. Gonna drop right in the middle. I didn't know much about C.S. Lewis. Never read the Chronicles of Narnia as a kid. I was at a Christian summer music festival in 2009, 10, and 11. In 2010, I saw somebody read this book during the lunch hour and somebody asked them about it. And I was quiet and I was just watching. I wanted to see what they said. You see the baskets of fish and you kind of wonder like, does that book prove that miracles are real? Does that book talk about miracles? Is it is it stupid? Is that a stupid book? I don't know, it looks kind of stupid, but I was quiet and I listened. And one of the professors asked that person, oh, are you reading Miracles? Have you read any of the other books? And she said, yes, this book is so good. It's hard to get through. It's really dense, but it's so good. I'm liking it a lot. And that was it. That was the entirety of my previous experience with Miracles before somebody recommended it to me. Now at Masterworks Festival, this artistic director, Dr. Patrick Cavanaugh, let me speak with them one-on-one -on -one regarding the compositions that he had made. He's a microtonal composer and he wrote some great stuff, really great. It's not palatable for many people, but there's a lot of value in it. During our conversation, he asked me point blank about how my faith was, and I told him that back in 2010, I was atheist agnostic, to which he replied, oh, indeed. And he told me about some of his experiences with close family members who were also agnostic atheists and the debates that he would have with them and how much he loved them and his different points of the issues, what he believed in, what scientific acknowledgements he made. It was all very lucid. It was the most lucid conversation I had ever had about the Christian faith to that point. And that really pulled me in because he accepted me immediately. And so interested to hear the exact amount of mileage that I can get out of a lucid conversation about Christianity, I asked him for some book recommendations. And he recommended two books by C.S. Lewis, Miracles and Mere Christianity. So that was in July of 2010. And when I returned to college the next month, I eventually made my way over to Baylor's bookstore where I picked up a copy of Miracles. And eventually, after a lot of procrastination, I cracked the book and read a couple chapters on a bus trip on the way to a conference. You can see the smudges on it. I forgot exactly what those are for, but I like to imagine that that was my striving against this book. So how does this book open? How does this stupid book open? Chapter one, the scope of this book, those who wish to succeed must in turn ask the right preliminary questions. Uh-oh. So C.S. Lewis begins by a series of very convincing and very factual definitions. If this is true, then this is true. If this is true, then this is true. Talks about what is nature? What is supernature? If everything that exists is nature, then things that don't exist are supernature. I didn't make it more than a couple dozen pages through this book. I closed it on that bus trip and I just sat and just talked to my friends for the rest of the trip. I was like, the book's stupid, the book's dumb, I don't wanna read it, but really, I knew this book scared the crap out of me. I knew, quietly, covered up, that there was something in this book that I hadn't considered, that I didn't know everything, and then maybe, just maybe, actually, not even like that, I was probably mistaken, and I dug in my heels. And so, this book was very pivotal in my journey to being a Christian. And I highly recommend it to anybody who is curious. 